Hi everyone, Kez here, with a quick content warning for today's episode. In the second segment, we joke a little bit about abortion because we're talking about the Mananangal, uh, but it's nothing too explicit. If you stick around for today's episode, have a great time, and I'll see you in the mid-roll. As a disclaimer, Monster Fuckers Anonymous is indeed about wanting to love and have sex with monsters, but we want to make things extremely clear from the get-go. Not all of the chosen monsters will be sapient, but we will not be endorsing zoophilia or bestiality. We will be as transparent and ethical as possible, while also sex positive and mostly having fun. Vampires that stalk in the night. Werewolves that howl to the moon. Dragons that loom over the skies. These monsters and more have plagued mortals for millennia, clouding our minds with one singular thought. Can we fuck them? Fiction or reality? Which one should we be? Don't think that I'm that naive to see. The fiction or reality of things you've done to me. Now all this stupid shit is on repeat. Hello, one and all, to another fantastic, wonderful, stupendous episode of MMA, aka. Monster Fuckers Anonymous, a show where we talk about monsters, talk about the lore, talk about the media representation, and rate them on a scale of 1 to 10, whether or not you. It's you listening here today, end of Pride Month, you know, we're in July, relaxing by the sun, maybe the fireworks are going off, whether or not you should be having sex with those monsters. I'm your colorful creature consulting cleric, and with me, as always, it's the tenacious troubadour of tentacle-loving Joe, our tentacle analyst. You're playing Cookie Run. You're playing Cookie Run again. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking joking, Joe? What's up, huh? Yeah. What's Joe, up? we have a recording. Joe, just give me one second. Or give me one second. Oh yeah, you know, take your time. Yeah, no, it's not like we have anything to do. It's like we have people waiting. So like we have a two-hour block to get through of ZenCaster before yeah, yeah, it comes yeah. up on us. Uh-huh. I just no, gotta, you, I just, you know, I no no, I, no 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 it's okay no 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 it's okay I just have to get um I just have to get Mickey Mouse cookie um some boba really quick I I carve out two hours of my Saturday people text me to hang out I could okay. be doing things we can you condense good? that bit <laughs> <laughs> all right Joe you you good now you you're, you're yeah, ready yeah, to- yeah yeah I'm good. All right, I'm glad. Do you, do you want to tell the people what we're recording today or how we're feeling? That's so interesting. You know, I spent a, like all of June being gay, so I don't know. I don't. I don't know what this. I don't know what we're talking about. All right. Well, in that case, I'm going to go onto my phone. You know that I have. By okay. Me. I'm going to open an app here. Let's see what we got. And let's we just scroll an through this app. app. <laughs> yeah, it's... Are you loading up Grinder and you're finding no, a no, guess? D- no, I'm not loading. I I definitely didn't have that open. Um I no, okay, it's, okay, okay. it's find it's it's find a guest dot uh find a guest online. And so I'm looking through Craigslist. Just grabbing, left. Yes, Craigslist. I'm going on I'm going on Craigslist. Oh, okay. all right. This person seems pretty cool. This is Fabian. I'm gonna hit them up and Pop them into the call real quick. Boom! That was hey, so right. fast. Yeah, no, it was uh, Fabian. I don't know. You immediately joined the call. And Fabian has nothing. Is not a busy person. Doesn't even sound like such. No, no, definitely doesn't do things. Uh, isn't definitely one of the main producers of you know one of a successful TTRPG uh, Twitch stream known as Bad House Games or whatever. <laughs> Fucking <it> wrong. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fabian, introduce yourself. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Uh, do you want to do that again? <laughs> no, no, I don't. I'm owning it. I'm owning. I've been on that stream. I don't. I'm fucking. Owning it. <laughs> How, howdy, duty. Uh, my name's Fabs. Uh, the bits. The bits are great. Uh, um, like like cleric mistakenly said. Uh, I am uh the producer of Badhouse RPG. Uh, <laughs> it was in there. It was in there. Yeah, it was in there. And then games was in there. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, I also am a comic book artist, uh, writer, TTRPG performer, and uh, I get tortured every Tuesday by Joe. Uh, yes. And you take one by night. Truly, Joe torture is what it is, you know? 
Uh, but Fabian, thank you for responding to my my quick Craigslist ad to teleport you into our little limbo space to ask you a quick question. Uh, what should we talk about today on Monster Fuckers Anonymous? Craigslist? You guys found me on Grinder. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Hooray, Tuki! <laughs> Fine. Yes. I whatever. Yes, whatever. Whatever. Yes. Um, we're we're talking. So we're we're recording this like about two days before the Independence Day of my homeland. Um, so we're talking about Filipino monsters. Hey. hey. What is so so, Fabian? My question to you is: What is so interesting about uh, like Filipino mythology? What b- draws you not only to them, but what makes them so distinct? Between I know we have like we've talked a lot about Greek mythology, we've talked a lot about other like yeah. Western mythology, and I think even Japanese mythology. But what what is so unique and interesting about Filipino mythology? What's interesting is how uh, how detailed people get in describing these monsters. Like I feel like and. Hey, people can call me out on this. I feel like people, like Filipino people, are innately um, monster fuckers uh, because the way that they describe the monsters is, is always so in, in vivid detail. Of like, you know, every every account is like, I saw this towering figure with huge bulging muscular arms i thought uh, you said pubes <laughs> with, yes with pubes. huge pubes with just sticking huge, out huge 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 <laughs> bushy yeah. pubes uh, but yeah like it, it's just like this uh, this gigantic man sitting <laughs> sitting nonchalantly in a tree smoking a cigar and looking me up in debt like look lady i don't know you might be <laughs> you might be <laughs> you <laughs> But yeah, um, but Philippine mythology is very centered on um, three things. Uh, It's either monstrosities, uh, fake creatures, and uh, gods, or at least, you know, god spawn. Um, Mm. So it's very interesting um, because we also have like a lot of shared uh, kind of mythological kind mm-hmm. of creatures with the rest of Southeast Asia. Uh, a lot of it is like very similar. Right. Right, uh, right, right. Is it so, animistic at all like the just general mythology? Uh animistic meaning um like animals and plants and objects have like a soul and they can like it like if there are, are there stories about oh, like, you know, kind of uh it's not the animals themselves, but um this is where we go into a lot of like the fey represented Creatures. Yes, the duende and the encanto. Um, yes, we share a lot of Spanish words. If you didn't know, we were in under Spanish. I wonder word. why. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, I wonder. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, the the core thing is um, these animals, plants, nature is sacred, and if we don't uh, take care of it. Uh, some some goblin is going to point at your dick, and your balls are going to grow expeditiously. Um, is what the I'm sorry, what? I yeah. is that a real is that a real one? <laughs> no, this is no, a no, my balls, no, my balls. <laughs> this is a common uh a common like folk tale where you know hey if you step on a step on a plant and don't say sorry or oh, you pee on the side of a tree like without asking yeah, yeah it's yeah, a very yeah. superstitious mm. thing um and it's funny because it's always the the fairies that get the most slack because i don't know i maybe it's like a maybe it's like because of like the modern times where people uh have less and less sightings or care less about monsters um but the fey presence has always been like their uh go to for explaining the unexplainable hmm okay love it that's it's super interesting i'm i'm excited to talk about this and excited to talk about uh uh, some Filipino monsters because I, I was doing some research and I was looking into some a uh, couple of them. I think I found one that's super interesting. Again, all of the lore between all of them uh, that even the ones that we uh, unfortunately weren't chosen today, uh, all of them were super like 
I don't know. It was in death, but also very much like you said, like there had to be some respect in what was going on in the situation. I think that's very, and I like that. I like that when it comes to mythology. And so I'm super interested yeah. to, to yeah. dive in. I feel with like, y'all. yeah, I feel like uh, most of our monsters um, are either, uh, some of them are really evil, but a lot of them are very benevolent and protecting of nature and their yeah. home. And even the ones that are like tricksters, even those, there mm-hmm. are a level of like, you. there's a way to get out of it. There's a, a very simple yeah. way you can avoid this situation or avoid it. Yeah, uh, you put your clothes inside out. Speaking of that, I've actually chose, we've also, we'll get to that one. Uh, yeah. Because, so we've all done a little bit of research. I've chosen a monster, Joe has chosen a monster, and Fabian has chosen one. Uh, and so we're going to dive in and we're going to see which one of us has picked the best monster from Filipino mythology that you listening should have sex with. Uh, so I'm excited to dive in. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So Fabian actually a little bit alluded to the monster that I picked a monster that you have to be a little bit of a trickster, a little bit of a, a little bit of a smoker and a little bit of a, of a tree protector. So the monster that I've chosen is the tick balang. On the night of a full moon, you may hear a voice calling out to you. It could be a dear friend, a family member, or even someone you lost, beckoning you to the woods. You follow the voice and see your loved one standing there, welcoming you. You talk, laugh, and walk together throughout the forest. But suddenly, you can't seem to remember how you entered or how to leave. The smell of tobacco then enters your nose. You turn to see not your loved one, but a creature with the head of a mare, eyes crimson, the body of a man looming before you. You have been led astray by the Tik So I have picked basically a reverse centaur. The best it's- centaur. It's like it's a horse head and then man yeah. legs. So horse head and leg, yeah, horse head and legs are the body of a man is what it mm-hmm. is is what this is, which you know could be sexy. Hey, every uh, like viewers, do me a favor. Just go on to Google and type Tikbala, T I K B A L A N G, and every single depiction of this creature. As a six pack, I was gonna say, like, they're ripped, so. they're ripped, calm gutters. Like, you already know it, calm <laughs> gutters. From <laughs> it's ripped, it's, it's this, amazing. <laughs> so, some background that I got from this, uh, from this creature is they are invisible somewhat, they hang out in like trees, like on tree branches, just smoking, uh, just smoking cigarettes, smoking tobacco, just like Thunder Man. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, just hanging out in some trees. You wander into the forest. They'll like transform into your like anyone you know, and they'll try to lead mm. you deeper into the forest to then like take your soul and like lead you so you can never escape. Mm. Uh, and apparently, like Fab said earlier, the only way to get ri- like to trick them is to turn your shirt inside out. Mm-hmm. And I don't get why that just defeats them, but it does. So while you're in the forest, while you're being actively led astray, as if you realize in between everything and you just turn your shirt inside out, will you be fine? No, everything. Shirt, pants, All underwear, everything. Mm-hmm. And that's Shoes. the thing. I, I feel like the reason why you get out is they got what they wanted. They just wanted to see you naked. Ah. Uh, yeah. So... This is a trickster. This is for sure a trickster. Like they said, they turn into a loved one. They turn into somebody that wants to. So mm-hmm. you stay in the forest, walking around, just like exploring uh, all that shit with them. They also, what I want to say is, there's some uh, a little bit of kindness here. They will sometimes come to villages just to play, just to hang out, uh, mm-hmm. transformed into somebody just because they, they want to just be like, we're lonely in the woods here. Let me just go hang out with all these people. Uh, and and go it's. Do that. It's also funny because, like, a lot of the folklore centers around trickery, sure, but also I feel like this is one of the most romantic, or at least romanticized, creatures in Filipino mythology Absolutely. because we have we have a we have a specific uh, superstition where if it rains and the sun is out, a tikbalang is getting married. So it's pretty. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah. In in Korean, that's um the ti- tigers are getting married. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's the fun thing. In uh Hispanic culture, there is like if a witch is getting married, it's un bruja. There's a lot yeah. of mar- marriage. Yeah. Man. Monsters, they just want to be loved. I can't believe the tigers and the witches and the tikbalangs are getting married. Yes. They're all, wow. all together. They're all getting married. It's a polyamorous marriage. They're holding hands. Yes. Polyamorous. Okay, anyway. 2024. <laughs> Uh, what attracts you to horses? Spirit. Yeah. Oh, yes, you're right. <laughs> we literally <laughs> talk about this. <laughs> I don't know. Why, I don't know why you fucking have to ask me a question like that. Look up a picture of Spirit I thought right it now. Was... Those eyebrows. <laughs> I thought you it was cum because. Gutters? Uh, damn. <laughs> I thought it was because you were uh, you were touched by the kindness of uh, who was the horse in uh, Never Ending Story? I've never seen Never Ending Story. <laughs> Oh god! Oh yeah, you guys are children. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about, but I, I just do not don't. Know the I name. don't watch a lot of movies, and that is something that gets a lot. That's of not upset. true. I watch a lot of like I watch a lot of movies that come out in theaters. I don't watch a lot of old movies. Like, uh, like I just recently watched Beetlejuice for the first time, like a week ago. Oh right. damn! And like I watched The Evil Dead Two like last night, and I've never seen that before or any of the Evil Dead movies. Fair. But my lack of knowledge of movies aside, the re- I, I mean, first of all, imagine this, just horse head, which is fine. You, that's That can be a little distraction. People have horse faces now, so let's, let's not get too crazy here. Uh, but you got a horse head, body of a god, but like damn, like abs on abs, Adonis. muscles, grow, like you know he lifts, like deadlift 625 easy every single day. You look down, Man is hung. You know there's an expression out there. <laughs> hung like a horse. I knew it. So I know I know he's packing. You know what I'm saying? And then he's got ho- little hooves and legs, which is fine. That's not that, that important. But that, he's got little hooves and legs. Which is like all that added together. You can't tell me you're not a little bit interested. That would be a solid ass too. Oh yeah. Cheeks fucking up because he's a sprinter. Oh my god. Yeah. Imagine getting a piggyback ride by that man. His ass just knocks you right off of it. It's a seat. Yeah. It is. It, yeah. It's a seat. It's you, a seat. Seat belts backed on. That is hot. It's protruding out so much you could just sit on it. So I, I like to I like to paint a picture for you all about who uh, the Tick Belong is. And so what that is is like imagine I imagine this character is somebody who you meet you know as you're walking through maybe a park or something and you like you kind of like you drop your keys and you're like oh shit like you look you drop them you look back up and suddenly there's some dude kind of just sitting on like a tree trunk not even like where it is smoking a cigarette kind of has like it has a long face you know kind of thing but you're you're seeing him just smoking a cigarette and he's kind of has like a leather jacket but no shirt underneath it you know pant like kind of thing uh like ripped jeans like little like doc martens on uh, obviously boots Talk martins uh and he sits there he's smoking he kind of just like you you guys make eye contact as you pick up your keys and he kind of like laughs a little he chuckles and he's like what he's like oh no sorry like i didn't just like just kind of funny uh kind of thing and so there's this meeting it's like this kind of like bad boy aura that is um, protruding from this person and you know they kind of just walk with you you're like i saw you like oh you tripping here and he's like no i'm not tripping blah, blah 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 like i'm not tripping outside like I, i'm usually a great walker and you go through and then like you start just walking through the woods like you're losing yourself like you lose time just walking with this person in the park but there's such an attraction going on and there's so much like there being such like there's such an allure happening and then suddenly you're in a random spot in the park and you don't know where you're at like oh i've gotten so lost but you're then he turns around you get kind of lost in this man's eyes and his, and his man's like abs and you like he leans he's like well maybe we can make some time together and then you make out and then he's fucking pounding you on a fucking tree trunk on the side <laughs> yeah on, on the flip side okay yeah flip it on me let's say let's say you experience loss you know or whatever grand graham passes away from old age the comic and then all of a sudden, you know, while missing your gram gram, you hear her voice again. You look out. Fabian! Gram gram? Claire! Derek! <laughs> oh, yeah. As you venture out to the forest. I've to, always hated you. To, to, 
you know, a cost Graham Graham for mm. hating you. Yeah. You see a majestic creature and you are quite pleased that it's not Graham Graham and you don't have to throw hands anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm not really seeing any downsides here. I mean, I can make some downsides for you all, but I'm not seeing any uh, for my monster. Are you sure? I'm seeing some. And what would there those be? Okay, bring them up. Bring them up then. Um, look. Just because you're young and you can take it, uh, sometimes, you know, size is size doesn't matter, man. Just because you're young and your hole is valuable and stretchy. Yeah. My bussy takes everything. Call me a size queen. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I'm not actually a size queen, everyone. I want to make that very clear. There takes all we like every a, a, a play. <laughs> Anyway, love a good micro penis. Understandable, but understandable. that that is my that is my thing. Um, uh, I do like the idea of a hide and seek mechanic when you're trying to get some, but also sometimes you just want to be lazy and after a long day. Yeah, it does seem like there's always has to be a role play going on or like a yeah. costume, maybe a little bit. This is somebody who cannot have normal sex and will always be like, now, now you're Officer Jenny and I'm Nurse Joy. You're like, can we just Jesus Christ. do it? I don't need, we need to do all the, like the whole nine yards here. It's like, no, now you're uh, a motorcyclist in 1950s and I'm a gas station attendant that you're coming to find. It's like, what the fuck is happening, everybody? If we have 15 minutes. I have to go to work. I'm not putting on a costume. You have 15 minutes. I also don't like no quickies. I also don't like the idea of being reminded of the Harlem Shake every time I see the the monster. Um, excuse you know? me. Was that a common like figure in Philadelphia? Yeah, it's like Harlem Shake. No, it's well, I maybe it's every time I used to see the Harlem Shake, it was like some dude in a horse mask and just underwear. Right. right? Yes, 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 yes. And yes. I'm just like. Mm. Not an image that I need to be reminded of. That's what the Tikvalon looks like. Pretty much. (laughs) All right, all right, all right. There are some downsides. There's some weirdness. But in all in all, what really decides whether or not the Tikvalon is good is the Popo scale. So let's all dive into that. So first off, possibility. How possible it is to interact with this monster and be with this monster. Do you have to be near death at all when you're in this? Like, is it is it like a psychopomp situation or is it truly just like just takes your soul just because? Just because. Uh, yeah, I believe like, does, it's just does because. The, is the tick belong the ones taking the soul or just like leading you to the thing that will take your soul? I don't really, really think it takes your soul. I think you just yeah. wander into the woods. Like they cause you to wander the woods forever. You can escape, yeah. but when you escape, you're kind of just like blabbering on. It's like 12 years later. Yeah. And you yeah. come back and you're just like, you've been missing. What the, what the fuck? Uh, where have you been kind of thing? So I would more say it's a like, anyone can be a victim of it. Anyone can, you can, as long as if you're near the woods and you hear somebody, you're going to go into the woods and suddenly you're lost forever. So, Endless labyrinth. Very possible. Deep. Yeah. <laughs> I say this is possible. Yeah. Uh, I would give this an eight, to be honest. I'm also going to give it an eight. There's a lot of forest out there, a lot of thing, places to do, uh, a lot of pla- woods get lost. Say you're in New York. Tree sex. Like, uh, you get lost in Central Park. That shit is endless. Yeah. Oh, no. People go missing in there. So, well within the realm of possibility. Fabian? It's a sad fact, even. <laughs> it's a very sad fact. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'd go with that eight. I think, I think eight is a good, a good number for the possibility. Okay. Uh, with that, let's go to attractiveness. How attractive this monster is based on their Ten. physical <laughs> and their really? personality. Eleven. Damn. Like, Joe, I need you to, like, right now, search a picture. And- no, I know what they look like. <laughs> I th- I don't know why I was like horse face doesn't translate to ten for me necessarily, but body because it's basically I'll be real it's basically a minotaur with a horse head. Right, exactly. What are you looking at? It's me like not that? not. What, what are you? Looking it's at? not not a high number though. Like I'm still. I think I'll go eight okay. with this as well. I think that's so fair. I will also echo an eight. The horse head is kind of throwing me off 
a little bit, but also the crimson eyes kind of thing. They're having like red eyes, hot. Crimson eyes is what is bumps yeah. it up. You know, a little I bit mean, of like six pack. You can grate cheese on that shit. Hot. You're not really um, looking at the face if you're hitting it from behind. So, well, okay. I'm getting hit from behind. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fair. Audacity. How audacious it is to be with this monster. Not that audacious. Yeah. The reason really? being, they are romantic. They rot their they marriage. Are romantic. They are like they. If you get to know them while you're walking through the woods together, they're going out to seek you. Not like you go into the woods and chase after them. They're going out to trick you. They walk with you. They talk with you. There can't, there's an easy way to establish a relationship with them. This really isn't that audacious. I'll give this a six just because this is a trickster. Is this somebody who's trying to like lead you astray into the woods? But in all average, this is – I location-wise, any forest will get you, and they want to talk to you. A six. How the audacity score works as well, Fabs, is the lower the score, the more audacious, and the less – audacious the higher the score so sort of cleric is saying just a little above average not so audacious Mm -hmm. i'm trying to think i feel like it's probably not even a six in that case what are you thinking fabs i'm thinking a little bit audacious because they have to trick you into talking to them is the problem that's a, a good point as well they have to get you lost in the woods and they orchestrate your demise for them to be able to help you right. out. And then you take your clothes off and then it's like, ha ha, got him. Got you, idiot. <laughs> You've been tricked. All right, but what's, so what, what's the number we're feeling? We're, seven. Yeah, I was thinking about seven. We're aiming for a lower number to make it positive, right? Lower number is, is more a good audacious. So it's it's... It's a bad thing. It's negative to be more audacious. Okay. You know what I mean? So I so do out of four, four, if that's the case. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. In this case, then we go to parental approval. Would our Christian immigrant parents approve of bringing this monster home? Uh, Christian immigrants? Probably not. But if they were open-minded, hmm, that's a good question. Are your parents Christian, first of all? Um, No. Okay. Although we're not going to talk about my mom. Okay. Cool. She's 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 a parasocial relationship with Jesus right now. We'll see how it goes. Um, no, but so we can go with this more of the immigrant uh, yeah. lens. I mean, I, I I wonder how your parents would f- feel or view a, like you bringing home a tick belong and being like, "We're in love, man, mom." I mean, if we're going with my grandmother, who who's the one that I grew Freddy? up with, <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yo, I think my grandmother would be fine with it, <laughs> right? Totally. My, my grandmother's a pretty much a homie, so mm-hmm. um, I would give it for me personally. I'd give it like a a seven or an eight, a seven point five, seven point five. Okay, I'll take that. I think <sighs> anything because- related. Oh, I'm sorry. Go well, I think it. because it's a trickster and they can trick my parents, this goes up because they can, they can shape shift into anything. At, like, really, as long as it's like a person that, or I guess, like more specifically, people that are being mourned for, right? Mm-hmm. So I would give this a. I'm going to say if, if the if it was their original appearance, no, nothing's happening. But if we're going strictly by they they can shape shift trick them with a personality of being like uh being romantic i know they would actually care for me i'd give this maybe an 8 okay anything even i would i think for whatever reason my parents would maybe view the tick belong as like grim reaper type thing or mm-hmm. like a psychopomp or something not that i would not that i have to explain everything about like a partner or whatever i am just bringing home a horseman with crimson eyes and his cock is out um True. but maybe if he hypnotizes my parents with his cock and we just run we elope just you meat know spin it meat spin um six i don't know I'm not feeling it okay i think that's fine so with that, we have our we have our numbers. Time to add up add up our scores and see where this monster ranks up. So let's pause for math. Welcome to the mid roll. 
This is where I thank the people who have been supporting us and tell you where you can follow us while Cleric and Joe count up the numbers. This week we have a new supporter on Kofi. So hi and welcome to the Monster Enthusiasts, Soren. If you head down to our Kofi at Monster Lover Pod, then you can join the likes of Gwendolyn, Amelia G, Chris Chan J, Daydori, Akima, and Soren. Our membership started about $3 a month. And that's where we post outtakes to episodes like the one you're listening to right now and the scores for all of the monsters that we've reviewed across all of our episodes. We also have a $6 tier that we need to do some work on, but we are endlessly appreciative of those of you who have signed up for that one at all. We are at Monster Lover Pod wherever we are. So if you'd like to follow us, keep up to date with us, you can find us on Twitter for as long as that is still around. And if you'd like to support the show in non-monetary ways, you can rate us on Spotify or leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That's all from me. I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. All right, Joe, what do you got? So for the Tikbalang uh, Cleric, you got a 7.5 overall. I got a 7.3. Fab's got a 7.4, which gives obviously the Tikbalang a 7.4 median average. Hey, words. you know, that's pretty good. Comparing to our middling scores of guys getting fours and fives and six, a seven, a seven's pretty impressive by MFA standards. Uh, that, Optimus Prime is also a seven point. <laughs> add add uh, add this monster to the uh, MFA dating sim list. I mean, it's a service top. You gotta add it. You, you gotta, gotta gotta have it. <laughs> Anyways, that's for the tenacious took me long. Phoebe's Javian, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. So are you? We ready? don't know your pick, actually. Yeah, we so have no idea what you're choosing. So I'm going with the Mananangal, uh-huh. and uh, Joe's making faces right now, and Joe <laughs> has been giving me. But think about this. Just think about this. All right. Um, let's get into this. You know, the Mananangal. It's curious creature that isn't always a monster to begin with you know alluring and beautiful in the day Mm -hmm. wild and messy by night Mm -hmm. able to split themselves in two and scour the night sky and hunt i'm just trying to be hunted so the mananangal uh there's a lot of it's a lot of folklore behind it um so not all of them uh the funny thing about Filipino monsters is like a lot of them are just all of a sudden like cursed but Mananangals are created um, and they're created uh, by uh, eating a black baby chicken a a black chicken nugget uh, that was gestating (laughs) in the throat of another Mananangal so you know um, and there's also a way to cure it but either way I digress we're talking about fucking monsters here um, I'll just jump into it, okay? Why the Mananunga, you ask me? There's nothing to fuck. There is, and they leave it behind for you while they do their thing, okay? No. Oh. <laughs> All right. Excuse me? So they're leaving behind a flashlight, you're, you're saying? <laughs> yeah, basically. Yes. So th- think about it this way, all right? Think about it this way. So in the day... You know, they're like any regular person, you know, and when they have to clock in at night and they have to do their thing at the abortion clinic. Yeah. And you're you're a little lonely. uh, They're just going to be like, hey, let me leave you something. (laughs) All right. Also, if they're like, hey, I'm going to take the day off. But um, what if what if you do this thing where you hit it from behind while i eat you from behind so yeah with there's a lot of the the severed body yeah there's there's a lot of yeah flexibility for sure there's a lot of flexibility um but let me describe the mananunga okay the mananunga um any normal woman can be mananunga just just to be clear gender is a concept we're just using woman as a folkloric like basis yes, here right um and uh basically at night when the sun falls they uh they detach their upper torso from their lower torso they have to hide their lower th- torso um 
because that is their weakness. Um, and uh, they go into the sky, they sprout wings, and they fly. They have a proboscis-like tongue to feed on, you know... Babies. Babies. Unborn babies. Uh, look, they're, pro, they're pro-choice here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> so if, if you get them pregnant, uh, never mind. Um. <laughs> but uh, so that's their description. You know, their their visage doesn't change as much. They've been depicted. You guys know the episodes of like Buffy the Vampire Slayer when like yeah they turn into vampires. Yeah, they have yeah. been depicted that they would transform their faces like that. But we've all seen Drusilla Angel. Spike, come on. That's not a that's not it's a not, deal that's breaker. Not terrible. It's very bat it's bat like. Um yeah. they're like selkie vampires almost, but like their mm-hmm. lower half is literally their clothes. So yeah. okay. A lot to process here in yeah, certain ways. Come a lot. Process it. Come yeah, on, process come on, it. Come on and process it. I'm not okay. There's there's some downs, there's some bad sides that I'm saying, but I'm also I will admit that Fabs, you bring up some great a great point of I thought about this a long time already. I can tell. <laughs> You've had your whole lifetime of childhood. Yeah, a whole to think about lifetime this. of childhood. So when it comes to like meeting this person, yeah, I I this like hey listen, I gotta go out uh, to do some shopping at night. Listen, uh, let's do some exhibition play while I'm outside. You just hit it from mm. behind while I do everything. Like I just hit it while I'm away. There's some trust well, I'll there. Get us some there's dinner. Some, yeah, yeah, there's some communication there. Ah. There's some there's some freakiness, you know, basically of again, like I said, this is like, hey, use this fleshlight while I go out, I guess. My God. But it's connected to me. And when I come back, I'm going to suck your soul out, you know? Yeah. Suck the nut right out of your testicles. But <laughs> there are some issues here. I think, first of all, there, she's them. split in half. Just straight up her yeah. guts are hanging out. From the side, just flying around, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, she is a that vampire. Means it's, means it's wet. End the show. <laughs> End the show. I'm done with this shit. I'm done with this shit. What the fuck do you mean by that? I'm done with this shit. It's just it's period <laughs> sex, but you don't know. This where. is the worst. <laughs> where. That's why I was initially grimacing because. Fabs has particularly tortured me with this creature in uh, a stream like a, two years ago, a year ago at this point. A year ago, I think. A year ago. Okay. And I, I love her, but wow, bringing her here. Yes. So, again, we're dealing with uh, a creature, you know, somebody <laughs> who she's a working woman, working nine to five, probably. She's going to be very nocturnal, maybe working a night job. She has to eat, mm-hmm. like, so there's going to be some difficulty there. Like you said, like, hey, like, you do that. Like, uh, basically, you go do this. I'm going to be doing that while I have to work. So there's not a lot of communication. But like I said, if you're into exhibition stuff, into, like, yeah, hitting things from behind, watching somebody squirm while you do things, while they do things, this works out for you, I guess. And like Fab said, fly in the back to do all that. You have uh, double double trouble. Again, I think we're moving way past, fast past the, you know, the severed torso part flying around that she's also a vampire. That eating babies. Eating, mm-hmm. eating babies. But mm-hmm. so I like to. I'll leave, Who I'll, doesn't? Who doesn't? So let me paint a scenario. Let's let's jump back into this the scenario here. Um, Very quick though. Yes. They have a lot of weaknesses. Okay, what are some of them? What are what are garlic, salt, sunlight? Classic vampire stuff. So yeah, um, that's it's, a guy. it Vinegar. also looks like they avoid a lot of like sort of uh like knife like things or like yeah. uh things that pierce. Yeah. So food play is out of the off the table. Um, I'm not bringing a broth into the bedroom. I don't know where the fuck you thought that was unfor- happening. Unfortunately, they don't like garlic. Yeah, that's a, certainly a problem. This person is on like a low sodium diet. Yeah, low vitamin D. Well, not really. They're pre diabetic. They're pre diabetic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me. They're Southeast Asian. Let's yeah. let's paint a picture here of this person. Let's say you are maybe you're at a club late at night. Actually, no, not at a club. Actually, let me rephrase that. No, not at a club late at night. You're at a wedding. 
why a wedding? Pick. No, they target grooms to be. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's actually okay. Yeah, let's go with. Uh, you're at a wedding. Maybe you're the best man. Maybe you are the groom. You're about to get married. You like as you're putting on your tie, you're getting everything ready. You, you see this? <laughs> you're about to commit adultery. <laughs> you're, oh, okay, no, that actually sounds great. That sounds bad. Let's <laughs> let's go with the best man. You're the best man in this situation. Yes, yes, yes. Scrap that first part. Let's let's scrap the whole beginning part of this. You're you're a groomsman. Maybe the best man. You're putting on your tie, hyping up your guests. Uh, your uh, your uh, bestie. your bestie who's about to get married. You have a bridesmaid that you're supposed to go down with. It's this beautiful woman, straight up, just next level. Ooh. And she's just like, she looks at you, you start, you like, you, of course, you're going to joke with the person that you're walking down the aisle with, you have this ghost, but you're also hitting off. She talks about all, like, you ask her, hey, you know what? I wish you really off. Do you want to get some dinner sometime? Well, she's like, well, I'm actually on a diet. I really don't eat a lot of, you know, uh, salty foods. I don't eat a lot of uh, garlic Alliums. stuff. I, I cook a lot of things from home. Would you want to come to my place uh, and I'll cook you a meal and we can have like a little home date. And you're like, okay, that's cute. And you're like, when do you want to do it? She's like, only in the mornings. We can only really meet in the morning. Like that's the only time. Like if it comes at night, I have things to do at the night. I can't do that. So then you start seeing her. It's all like strictly morning dates. You don't do anything in the night. You all this, you eat her food. Not really tastes good, but it's like good. But you know, you go have this whole date situation. Eventually, you kind of you stay too long. You get enraptured in a conversation with her. And then suddenly she realizes, oh, the sun's going down. You have to go. And you're like, why? What's happening? And suddenly she splits in half. Bottom half down, top half. Fiona from Shrek. Basically, you freak out. There's a freaking moment. But then you're just like, babe, there's just more of you to love, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Uh and go through that. But she's like, hey, listen, I I love you. You can, we can have sex like normal, kind of freaky. You have some freaky ass sex of two people, two places, you know, that shit like that. But it also, it also turns into, listen, I have to go suck the souls out of people. You can just enjoy, protect my bottom half. And suddenly you're now have to protect this, like, this is her weakness, reminder. Yeah. So like, you can't really be messed. Like if she's out and about, like trying to consume people, you can't really be messing with her bottom half. You have to protect it, or say like vampire hunters come out trying to hunt. You have to fight off vampire hunters. Then there's all these situations I, of now. I'm gonna tell you right now. Look, if you're at the point where you're banging the bottom half of a man and go when they're off doing whatever, you're at that point where you're committed. So uh -huh. protecting protecting it is kind of like a given like you, you're you choose to do it at this point there's no <laughs> okay let's we've you've given me a lot to think about but i think i we the only way yes. for me to really process it is in the papa scale. let's get into it so let's, okay. let's, let's get into tackling it. it that way so let's how go for prevalent are they yes. yeah like how like I, like where do they come around to like they're because they're just ladies in the, in the daytime yeah, right they're just ladies in the daytime it's so easy to come around i mean if they're overly if they find you overly attractive i guess like hey it's probably a modern go <laughs> <laughs> Damn. If any woman finds you attractive is probably yeah. a vampire sucker. have you seen me like <laughs> it's like damn oh shit no. um nine in that case yeah I, yeah but also mm -hmm. i have i i do have to point out once if they're tired of this whole splitting in half thing you can cure them okay how oh that's right yeah how what's the cure so the cure is kind of funny um so they say to tie them upside down and swing them around until they get dizzy till they throw up that that black chicken nugget um, oh it's still in their body yeah that's that's like fun. <laughs> <laughs> that like that's like, the, and, and, and we really have to work towards it. It's like I, you know, I'm like tired of like severing and have all the time, yeah. but like I don't really feel like what the doing the cure. And it's like I mean, hey, like what do you? That, like, we could, well, we could here's the thing: the, this cure was talked about like centuries ago. We have right. roller coasters now. True. You can, you can have a fun day. I'm not trying to get ride, hit. Ride. Sex swings. I'm not trying to get hit with a chicken, like a, 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 a demon chicken nugget while it's Six Flags. And also, but like Joe said, the you could get a sex flags, swing. The Six Flags, you can just, it'll fling to another 
poor lady and then another yeah. mononongo. Or yeah, you can you just like you said, you can use a sex wig. Okay, so I'm not really yeah. seeing a lot of downsides here, to be very honest. But yeah. again, I will say for a possibility, I would put this at a seven. The reason being they target brides like grooms and brides to be. So you have to be in like That's, wedding season yeah. energy. Which mm. I mean, uh, everybody in your, getting in your late twenties, everyone's getting married a little bit. Your friends and family are yeah. all getting married. I'm already in my. I'm already in my thirties. That's that's easy. Yeah, that's easy for me. Yeah, uh, so who's gonna put a ring on this finger? You know, I'm waiting. Oh, I don't need a ring on this finger. I just need to go to a wedding. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll. Uh, I just want to be loved. I'll put you. it at a nine, just like like Joe. All right, attractiveness. How attractive is this monster? Kind of iconic. Like Ooh. everything is everything is so notable about the design of this. The it's also kind of unique. There's not a lot of right uh, overlap mm-hmm. with like other cultural creatures. The only one that I think comes close in Western mythology is, from what I know, is the Dullahan, which is has the head separate kind of thing. Right. That's but there's also like a different separate creature in Philippine mythology that has it's just called the Pugot, which is pretty much like translates to sever. Mm. It's a shape shifting creature that doesn't have a head. Um, mm. But yeah, like okay. that's fair. So yeah, no, this is a very unique creature from like the from having two separate halves, but still a whole kind of. I will rank this at a six. No, actually, no, I take that back. I'm gonna do an eight. The Thank concept. God. Thank you. Uh, shut the fuck up, Joe. The concept alone <laughs> interests me a lot. The split in half, I think the voyeurism and the the uh exhibition aspect of it is super hot. This like the two halves of like think is really uh, is an interesting thing. It brings it it brings a new dynamic than most monsters uh, involved. Uh, the so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna write this as an eight. What what is your face, Fabian? What are you making there? No, because you said voyeuristic, and it's like, hey, if you like getting watched, they can sit somewhere else while you. Basically, yeah. this leads to new possibilities. I think this is also an eight for me. Uh. I mean, I would baseline it at an eight, but like, hey, if they they look like uh, actress, like any actress, just imagine any actress. If they look like that in the daytime. Glenn Close. <laughs> Yo, Glenn Close. Holland. Dude, Helen, Helen Mirren. Got me. Helen Mirren. I mean, honestly, Helen Yo, Mirren. Just think. Gelf. But yeah, like. Uh, le- like, just imagine, just imagine Liza Sobriano, which is a Filipino actress. Mm. Damn, right? Damn. So, yeah, like, it can go up. It can. It can go up, but baseline eight. All day yesterday. So pretty, pretty audacious, it feels like. Mm-hmm. I mean, less so that, like, this is something that will actively attempt to kill you, and more so she could blink and kill you, like... Mm-hmm. It could happen on accident. Yes, but but for the most part, it seems like she's just like she has a lot of vendettas. She has this curse that you can help her with, but if she doesn't want you to be cured quite yet, and she yeah. has some things that she's going through, I mean, it, it's pretty manageable at the same time. I'd give it a seven for the storyline, just for the plot. Uh, a four, I... or it? You think it's like less? It's not that audacious. Oh no, no, I think it's super audacious. So yeah. Okay, so like four. I'll I'll give it a four for the storyline. I too will give it a four. I think I'll echo that as well. I'm also gonna give it a four. All right then. So now we go to parental approval. Would our parents approve if we brought this creature home? I would say in the daytime. In the yes, daytime. In the daytime. In the daytime, it's a ten. Right. In the nighttime. It's a party one. time. It's a one. Yeah. I don't know if that gives her a five, though. Just roll a d10. <laughs> okay. I, oh, like I said, oh, no, you're getting the dice out? Nine. <laughs> Nine? All right, then. There we go. <laughs> no, um, I'll say seven. I think that's like a, a medium, not even a medium that's not a medium uh, in my heart yeah. of 
upbringing. I'd give it. I'd give it a nine because Grandma can't stay up too late anyway. So oh, so true. Mm. I will. I my parents really like to hang out at night, so I could definitely pull out a daytime quick thing. Uh, and if I say that you know she works late at night, she does things like that. <laughs> That's true. Third, I think should work out. So I'll give this an eight. Yeah, tell, just say like, uh, oh, she works at the clinic, the ER, graveyard shift, literally. graveyard shift. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that all works out. Now, now that we got our numbers, it's time to do some math. Joe, pause the recording. Pause the recording right fucking now. Pause it now. Pause it! Unpause the recording, Joe. Unpause it. Unpause it now. Tell them the score. Tell them the score. Tell them the score. Tell them the score. The scores for the Mananangal. Um, Cleric, you got a 6.8. I got a 7. Fab's got a 7.5, which gives her a 7.1 altogether. Okay. Damn, two sevens in a row. That's a that's a good Our pretty first good. 7.1. Ooh, okay. Awesome. Filipinos, man. Hey, they're showing up. But let's see if we can keep the yep. let's see if we can keep it a triple seven score of this episode by Joe. What monster uh, did you bring to the table? It, I, that if, whether or not this is a triple seven will depend on someone who is biased against other. Oh God, Cookie Run, other beasts oh of burden. My God. <laughs> other what? What, do, what um, did you? I'll say? be talking about the Sarangai. Half water buffalo, half man. The Sarangai exhales fire and brimstone from their nostrils in a rage, a jewel affixed to their ear, and presumably many other riches. The Sarangai guards what is theirs mercilessly, killing all thieves and blackguards who dare stand in their way of peace. So, I brought you the Filipino Minotaur. I like it. Zero. Zero out of ten. I, yeah, right. I, yeah, I mm. figured. Um, and uh, I I wish I, I almost went for something maybe more, a bit more culturally, like, uh, not renowned necessarily, but like I had like uh, the Filipino witches. I also was thinking about inter- like bringing um, Mumbabara. Yeah, the Mumbabara. Uh, but then you put a bull man in front of me. You're going to act up. I'm going to, you know, it, it's, it's funny because also I really don't talk about Your Minotaurs. Bull fascination? My bull fascination, my ball, fa- my balls fascination. You don't talk about unless balls obviously. Enough? I I wouldn't just like talk about it outside of MFA candidly necessarily. Um, I just feel so strongly for like bull men, bull anything in general. I wrote uh, an essay about it at some, you know. Mm-hmm. There's You're- there's something very culturally interesting about um the gods or whomever putting um a beast of burden in onto a man's body. There's, I think it's just always something interesting, even with the Tikbalong. But this one is more of the, that from what we were talking about in the beginning, this is the more of the protector side of their own like jewels and riches. So like they always have like this earring or like this, uh, this jewel sort of like on their ear. And then they have their own, either they're protecting their own jewels that they're like just harboring or whatever, or like they're protecting someone else's. Uh, and they even, if you even touch their shit, you're getting killed. You're getting Damn. shot in the like in between. Possessive a little bit. Possessive of their own things. Okay. And uh, cleric, I don't want you to get into this argument that mm-hmm. um I know you're locked and loaded. I know you're ready with all the re- I have all your anti bull rhetoric in here in okay. locked and loaded. Yeah, look, just have um, your, have you, your argument yourself. You, just just figure it out. You are not involved in their possessions. So okay. it's not going to be a weird thing of like, if you touch my partner, I'm going to fucking kill you. It's not going to be that. I think there's a lot of like, hey, I have ancestral shit and you are not going to touch or steal it. Okay. Valid. You've, you've, you've defeated Spanish one of my arguments. piece of shit. Excuse me? Hmm? Fabian, what are you thinking? I have a lot of opinions about Minotaurs, but I want to know what your thoughts are here. So my thoughts are, um, first off, uh, they can present both mask and femme. Yeah, there's Hot. no, so that's a plus because I know that the Minotaur is almost exclusively, I think, almost exclusively one... mask, right? Yeah, yes. Um, so as uh, as the bi man that I am, uh, that's a plus for me. Mm-hmm. You know, 
I like to have it all. Um, um, and hmm, man, I know your argument is like, you know, it sucks to be uh, claimed as property and thank God that they don't. But sometimes I just want to be wanted. And also, Cleric, you want to be swept away, swept up off your feet by every fucking thing. So? So? so am I but, a hypocrite? You, but, yeah, but not I by am. bulls. I'm I just going to say this right now. Mm-hmm. Have you seen a buffalo's tongue? I haven't. Yeah, true. Lots That's of true. tongues in Filipino Here's, Allow monsters. me to, to make something very clear to everyone here. Let me make something okay. very, very just straight up, very honest. I am a hypocrite. I will forever be a hypocrite. I refuse to change my ways. You could ask me one thing one day, and I will immediately change my answer as soon as I'm under duress. I am a hypocrite. I don't think you're a hypocrite. I think you're an indecisive bitch, but sure. (laughs) Fabian, you live in my city. I'm willing to come over there and beat the shit out of you. You're not willing to cross the Hudson River, my guy. (laughs) You right. I ain't entering Jersey. Fuck out of here. You ain't coming to Jersey. Fuck out of here. I ain't going to Jersey. What I but what I mean by this is what you're describing to me at this moment is attractive. It's a bull. It's you know it, while it is uh, minotaur esque, a buffalo is an interesting uh, di- uh, differential. I like that they take care of things. There's something that they have to guard and something that they're like, hey, this is something I need to take care of. The negative I will say is again. You get to say you're basically dating a museum guard. No, nothing wrong with that. Are you it's, are you work shaming museum guards right now? Clark? No, what I mean by that is you're dating a museum guard. You're visiting over. It's a super buff person, mind you. You're like, oh my god. You meet them probably like on like while they're giving you a tour or something. And you start flirting with them. It's all those kind of interesting things. You get invited to their place. They're like a museum. Are you curator. flirting with an employee? Took it, fuck out of here. I don't know. People be weird. Uh, do you go to like okay? Maybe they're a museum curator, not a museum guard. So you talk to them all about like their ancient stuff, blah blah blah. You're like this is super interesting. You go back to their place. They have like some something on the wall or like a tapestry. You're like this is super interesting. You reach your hand out of it. Suddenly you get like the hardest smack of That's your life. That's not what's gonna happen. And you're just like don't touch that. Which is okay. That's cure. valid. Yeah. I, you shouldn't. I, you shouldn't be going in your partner's stuff anyway. I'm vehemently against the museum curator thing because it's not even that they're they're not putting it somewhere else these are like heirlooms and like crown jewels in their home and like they're protecting their home or like someone's home or some kind of like place where they see presumably these are like important things that they are how are willing to protect so much so that um i not similar to the tick belong with like the crimson eyes but like the sarangai is always like is depicted with like breathing smoke out of their nostrils um when they need to like be intimidating when they're angry and they're angry creatures i think i i wonder what if the cultural background is just like uh sort of like an answer to a colonization based mythology or whatever like that this is like an angry upheaval sort of creature of upheaval could be yeah um i also think it's a plus that they are a homeowner (laughs) but they're not in in an hoa uh they're on their own land yeah exactly so you don't be so no hra that's at least a positive here no hoa they own their house they don't have to you know they don't rent you know how valuable that is nowadays true very true i don't know this is not i'm just they're sounding both super interesting and just like they're very middling to me. There's nothing really you're not selling me too much on you've basically just brought buff buff cow and I already did that earlier this episode. You're following on my coattails basically. Oh, you're just following you've brought this again. This is you know that meme Jim and Neutron mean where Sean where Sheen like shows up like Ultra Lord and it's like you brought Ultra Lord in for the tenth time for show and tell. That's basically what you've done, Joe. You've changed up nothing. You've brought no variety. You are basic. You've brought the same thing in a different font and it means nothing yes. to me. Okay. May yeah. this may this not be misconstrued of me agreeing with Cleric. Cleric's a great guy. I do also love you, Joe, but um I just don't like their diet. They're a buffalo. What do they eat? 
Oh, probably, right. They're probably vegetarian. I th- that would suck for me. I don't know yeah, how to yeah. cook vegetarian food. That's fair. I'm I'd have too. to learn. By all means, I would. For the right one, fuck yeah. I know how to cook, so I'm it, whatever needs to be done can be done. I and again, don't know. They could pick you up and right. They can pick you up, like throw you around, treat you like a little. I, little you know baby what? Boy. I I agree. Like I I again, I wish so much that I brought the wishes instead. Um, but I blacked out. My heart chose for me, you know. And I'm... if you bring this hell minotaur buffalo. Uh, who and you know what is really funny i don't really even care for the like protector trope that much it's okay. i think it's just the like steadfastness to their belongings or property as like a metaphor of like no one will take anything away from me again all right let's i think we've 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 gotten a general idea sure. we've something painted let's jump into the papa scale for the last time let's see what's let's see if you sure, can sure, sure. switch up change it up uh, by us finally just diving in here. So, possibility. Where are these creatures located here? Cavernous areas, jungles. Right. Um, so, the, they're yeah. in more isolated places. It's almost, it's kind of akin to cryptids in the way mm-hmm. that, like, you chance upon them if you're, like, walking, if you're trying to find like, jewel caves or whatever. Or, like, so I think definitely way less accessible than the Tikbalang and the Malanangal. Like the circumstances for the Tikbalang might be choosy as well, but for the Sarangai, it's like it's definitely not like a seven, which is like our lowest score out of everything uh, yeah. that we've that we said. I think compared to the Tikbalang, uh, the Sarangai, you have to seek out. Yes, yeah. It doesn't so seek that, you out. Yeah, yeah. I think that gives um, my friend a four. I. Yeah, I'll echo that. I'll give you a four. I'll give it a four as well. I'd give it a five for the culture. Also fair. Did you hear my stomach growling? I did not, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what that was. <laughs> so, okay, that's for possibility. For attractiveness. Now, I'm not going to sit here in front. I'm not going to sit here. I'll give this a 10 as well. It's a 10. The reason being, I love muscly Minotaur women. That's so fair. There we go. There yeah. it is. And I've already, and I'd be a hypocrite. If I change up my score from the uh, from the monster I chose earlier, where it was basically just another minotaur with a horse head, and I gave that a pretty high score. Bull, buffalo slash bulls and horses are so different. Oh my god! All right, I'll lower the score. You want me to play this game? I'll lower the fucking score. Sure. If they're just not the same. All right, then shut up. Take the ten. Take the fucking take the I'm win, gladly. Joe. It's also not my win necessarily. It's this for the Sarang Sarangai, so whatever. Oh my god, it's uh, not my win. It's not my win. Cry about it. I do have to say that I'm really disappointed in modern depictions of this on in Filipino TV because yeah. they had this mousy woman play one, and uh, you know, interesting makeup choices, but uh, nah, we're going the classic here. We still need classic. Time. Yeah. Yep. Still mean classic. Let's go for it. All right. And that's the case. Audacity. How audacious it is. I think this is pretty audacious. I don't think it's more audacious than uh than the Mananangal for sure. It might be an mm-hmm. in-between of these two that we have so far. I don't think it's audacious because it basically doesn't care as long as you don't touch your shit. Yeah. Like it, okay. it is a vibin vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. Vibin vegetarian. Man, imagine, you know, just here's a plus for this this thing. Okay. What's the plus? It cleans their house. Make sure they clean their stuff. Okay. They're cleanly they're a little bit of a clean freak. Okay. Yeah. That that hilariously does just present a problem to me because I'm not a very clean person. But I only I only don't keep my shit clean. We can have separate rooms. They're gonna um, probably keep everything clean. I know, right? <laughs> I, I I will feel so bad, uh, but I don't. I'm so terrible at cleaning. I All can right. cook though. I can cook. I will Audacity. give this. I'll give this a I, seven for me. Seven. I'll also. I'll give this a six. Let me let me change that up. I'll give it a six. 
Okay. I'm because there's really I I'm not really seeing a lot of for this person because I'm already just seeing like the already we've had like the Minotaur conversation basically. There's not yeah, much yeah, yeah. like I I know that I can add to it, but it's also that I'm trying to imagine scenarios with this person. I'm trying to imagine what this thing would look like, and I'm basically just imagining a Minotaur with like cur- very curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably not wrong. <laughs> yeah, literally. So I respect it. I'm interested in it. I think it's hot. I'm going in seven. Seven. I'm going to say with a six here. Now for parental approval, I'm going to say an eight. Why you might ask? This is a buff Cleans. person. Cleans. Takes care of it. Knows exactly what they want. Has boundaries set in place. Has a very stable like they're a protector. Uh, no as HOA. I as I am a soft baby child, my parents respect anybody who will protect me. Uh, so that's why if anyone is above six foot and they say they see me and I get picked up in their big meaty arms, uh, my parents <laughs> would be like, "Thank you, thank you for taking care of our son like this. You truly do care." So Take eight. them away forever. We don't want to ever see them again. Um, <laughs> I I realized that I gave the standard Minotaur a two point five for parental acceptance. Uh, which was pussy shit uh, to that. That's on you. To past Joe. That's on me. Past That's Joe. That's on you. Um, but I, I'm, I'm loving your direction because I was just thinking, like, yeah, exactly. Like this is, this isn't like this isn't like a literal like hell minotaur or a minotaur that lives in a labyrinth. Like this is one that has more freedom to like roam independently and like have things for themselves. <sighs> You're saying eight. I don't know if it's quite an eight, which is hilarious. I think I'll say a seven, though. I think it, the chances are pretty good. I would have gone an eight, but I think I'm going with a seven because I think my grandma is not going to be cool with the horns. Yeah, right, 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 right. Catholic woman, you know. Catholic. Mm. We have the scores. We have them. All of them. Taken together. Added together. Get them together. So now, for the last time this episode... Hit us with it. Hit us with it. So, our final monster, our final scores for this Harang Ai. Uh, Cleric, you got a 7. I got a 7. Fab, fiabs. Got a 7.3, which gives our Sarang Ai uh, the second 7.1 for today. So we don't have a loser. Mm. We have in first place for this episode, Cleric is the winner with the tick. T- I never lose. I never with lose. The, with the tick balang with a 7.4. And then Mananangal and the Sarang Ai got a 7.1 for this episode. I'm going to take it. Uh, I am a winner. I'll never forget that. I always win. I never have lost. This is I'm your the first win winner. in a second. Or oh, oh, cry about it. Anyways. You're Laughing really into Jack horses, lost. huh? Arceus lost. Oh my god, Joe. No one gives a uh. shit. All that matters is who won the last time. And it's me. Anyways, Fabian, thank I you so much for joining. I think about the cumulative. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How would you accumulate these nuts? Anyways, Fabian, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a wonderful time. You brought an amazing topic. This was super fun and enjoyable to talk about. Tell the people who they are, where they can find you, and where and what projects you're going to be with it. Tell the people who they are. Yeah, tell them who they (laughs) are. I can do that. (laughs) Yeah, tell them who they are. When does this come out again? This is July, mid July. No, it comes out. Yeah, the first, uh, the first two weeks of July. Okay, so yeah, July 8th. So whatever okay. you is, are, is coming up for you during that time. Okay, um, so uh, you can find me, uh, well, I'm Fabian. Uh, you can find me on the interwebs at Rockets and Pens or Badhouse RPG. Uh, I do comic stuff. Uh, I do TTRPG stuff. Uh, but mostly uh, I... Uh, I do producing on Badhouse RPG at the moment. Uh, you can uh, check me out, find me playing, getting tortured by Joe uh, as Jet in Itaewon by Night. Uh, and uh, follow us on Twitter to see more updates in our new shows. Wow. Wonderful. Uh, if that's the case, then uh, Joe, do you have any closing thoughts for this episode? 
So the new cookie run uh, kingdom sort of Shut plot the line that's fuck going on. Up. <laughs> all right. My closing thoughts. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, uh, Fabian, for joining us. This has been a lovely time. Uh, rate us on Spotify. Rate us on other things. Send us reviews. Whatever you want. Whatever you need. No one cares. No one knows. In any case, time to sign off. Goodbye. Bye. Peace. Eric, you you had a few babies, a few. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> You've gotten people pregnant. <laughs>